Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're doing linear application problems. I have six examples. Um, they're all kind of the same, but they're all different. Uh, if that makes any sense, but it's okay, we got this. Um, so we have the first scenario we have at the end of the day, Jeff found that the local cash register receipts at the motel where he works were 286.20. This included sales tax of 8% and we need to find them out of tax. So just remember that 8% means 8% as a fraction or as a decimal is 0 0.08, okay? We also know that the total cost will be the cost of the room plus tax, okay? I know the total was 286.20 because it says right there, so 286.20, we're trying to figure it out the cost so we can figure it out the tax. So it doesn't matter what it is, tax is a percentage of the cost. And it, sa it says right there it's 8%. So, but it's 8% of what? So it's 8% of whatever the cost is, because I don't know. So it's 8% of what the cost is. Cost is X, and tax is 8% of whatever this was. All right, now we can start solving. And this is not the only way to do it, but that's an easy way for you to get started. So at this point, combine these two, and then you're isolating X, divide both sides by 1.08. And here we have... Two eighty six twenty divided by that, you got two sixty five. What does that mean? It's two hundred sixty five dollars before tax. That's not what the question is asking. The question is asking to find the amount of tax. Okay, so if I know the total was two hundred eighty six twenty, and I know before tax was two sixty five, can we just find the difference? So if the total was 286.20, I take away 265 because that was the amount before tax. That will give me the amount of tax. So 21.20, that's the amount of tax right there. The other way you could have done is if you know it was $265 before tax, and you know tax is 8% of 265, you can just multiply that by 8%. So you can do 265 times 0 0.08. That will give you the same $21.20. That's the amount of tax. So the answer is not this. The answer is the amount of tax. is $21.20. So every time you're answering a word problem, just keep your eyes on the question because it's really easy to lose focus on the mission and it's really easy to go, oh, 265, done, that's my answer. So watch out for that. And if you're not sure and you just box the answer, just ask yourself, what is the question? So the question was asking the amount of tax, so the amount of tax is that right there. The next scenario we have, um, Lois got 80, <laughs> it sounded funny, didn't it? 88 and 78 on her first two tests. Isn't it Louise? Lois, eh, okay. <laughs> What score must she, what she make on the third test to keep the average of 80 or greater? So 80 or greater, anything 80, 85, 89, anything above 80 is good. But 80 is also good too. So she has 88, she has 78. What does she need for the third test? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. We're talking about average. How do we find average? Well, the aver if I have to find the average of two things, 
I don't know, the average between 5 and 10, I add them together and divide it by 2 because I have two things right there. That's why we divide by 2. Okay, so the average right there between three tests, I have to divide that by 3. All right, so this is my setup. I start by um, multiplying both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3, that's 1. I will combine these two together. That's 166 plus x greater than or equal to 140. All right, minus 166 from both sides. That leaves me with x is greater than or equal to 74. For, so Louise must score. 75, 74 or greater to keep the average of 80 or above. So the more she scores on the third test, the higher the average is going to be. A couple wishes to rent a car for one day while on, vac on vacation. Ford Car Rentals want $15 per day per mile. And then, while well, Chevrolet for a day wants $14 per day and 16 cents per mile. After how many miles would the price to rent the Chevrolet exceed the price to rent the Ford? Exceed, what does that mean? It means at what point will Chevrolet be more expensive than the Ford? So, at what point will the Chevrolet be greater than the Ford? Okay, that's what the question is asking me to find. So let's set it up. What Ford says, Ford car rentals um, wants $15 per day, $15 per day, and 14 cents per mile. You can call X or you can call M, whatever. And Chevrolet for a day, $14 per day and 16 cents per mile. Now, when you solve that, that's what's going to give you when is Chevrolet greater than Ford or at what price, after how many miles, would the price for Chevrolet exceed the price for the Ford? All right, so we're going to move things around here. I will take away 0.14x from both sides. And I will also take away 14 from both sides. This is Algebra 2. You can handle two, two steps at once. So here I have. Now you just divide. So 50, what is 50? Is it $50? Is it 50 miles? Go back and try to ask yourself, what does X represent? X in this case represent the number of miles. So 50 right here, X is greater than 50, 50 miles. That means after 50 miles, The price to rent Chevrolet exceed the price to rent the Ford. Always keep your eyes on the question because it's so easy to move away and not answer the question. All right, the next one, we have Steve is saving to buy a car and he decided to start looking as soon as he has saved $2,000. So if he has $1,100, and he can save 150 a month. How many months will it be before he can start looking for cars? Okay. So I'm just going to call M months. So I don't forget and I don't lose focus on the mission right here on the question. So he already has 1100 And he's saving 150 a month. 
each month. And then he'll be ready to start looking for a car when that number reaches $2,000. At what point, after how many months will that happen? Okay, so take away 1100 from both sides. Here we have, I marked them off because that equals zero, okay? They don't cancel, it's just zero. Okay, divide both sides by 150. Is that six? Yes, it is. So after six months, he will be able to start looking for a car because at that time, he's going to have $2,000. So after six months, he will be able to start looking for a car. Notice how we are picking up the pace here. We start really slow, and then we get the hang of it. It, it just flows better. Okay. Um, Lead Corporation produced a CD-ROM <laughs> back in the day. Um, drive at a cost of 120 each with fixed cost of 36000 Each one sells for 180 How many drives do they need to sell in order to break even? What does break even mean? What does it mean? Well, it means the company is not losing any money, but it's not making any money either. So that means the sales and the cost, they equal. Okay, so the sales and the cost to produce this whole thing is the same. So they're not making any profit. All right, so the sales, it says right, right here, each drive sells for $180. So each one will give you $180. But the cost is $120 each. And they have the fixed cost, you know, for building, electricity, um, employees, water, you name it. Just to get the building to operate, that's 36000 Okay? So, I uh, will, oh, not X right there. Oh, yeah, X. So, minus 120X on both sides. That equals zero. And then you divide. So that will be after how many drives will they break even at 600 drives? The amount of sales and the amount of cost will be the same. And that we're talking about the number of dollars. We're talking about how much money will they have to make here to break even so they're not in debt, okay, after 600 drives. Um, last one, a publishing company finds that the cost of publishing a certain book is $12.50 per copy, so per book. The fixed cost of publishing um, the book are $35,000. How many books do they have to sell in order to make a profit? Profit is what you make more than after you break even, so that's what goes in your pocket. After you pay all your bills, that's your profit of at least 15000 if each book sells for $25. So just a little side note right here. So sales, I just talked about it quickly. So if you're not listening, you won't know where this came from, but I just talked about it. So profit is after you pay the cost. So it's the sales and then you pay the costs. It's what goes in your pocket. So that's your profit. So each book sells for $25. So that's a plus. That's money going in your pocket. But then it costs you so money that you have to pay. You get out to pay. So minus $12.50 X per book, per copy, X. Okay? And then fixed cost, 35000 and it wants to be at least. At least means 15000 or more.
15,000 or more. All right, we're going to combine like terms and we're going to move the 35,000 to the other side. Here we have 1250. They don't disappear, but 25 minus 1250 is 1250. Okay, so if you're not listening, this is not canceling it out. This is not disappearing. Okay, that's when you add them together, that's what you get. And then you add 35,000 to both sides, you get 50,000. All right, now you divide both sides by 1250. Because 1250 divided by 1250 is 1, that leaves me with 1x is greater than or equal. Hmm. Yeah, 4,000 books. Look at that. So you have to sell at least 4,000 books to make a profit of $15,000. So you have to pay for your fixed cost. You have to pay to make each copy, of course. And then 4,000 books. All right, that's all I got for you. Have fun.